Okay, we're gonna talk about the pinch collar. Uh, if you're watching this video, this probably means that you used it on your dog at some point. Uh, the beauty of this collar is that it makes pulling very uncomfortable for your dog and it's very easy to uh, handle even if you are a beginner. Okay, uh, I'm gonna show you how to do this real quick. When you buy this at the store, uh, make sure you get one that is uh, not the links are not too thick. You want the links to be kind of medium. The links are too small, it's probably not right unless you have a tiny, tiny little dog. Um, but you want something with medium links. Even if you have a large, large dog, you don't want you don't want thick links simply because the thick links don't give us good of a correction and they're just way too heavy on your dog's neck. So assuming you get the right collar, uh, the right size, what you're gonna do is you're going to be tempted to just grab this and put it over your dog's neck and that's just the wrong way to do it. You don't want to do that. Um, because simply, if you can slip this over your dog's neck, it's over, over your dog's head, it's already way too big. Uh, what you want to do is, you want to unbuckle this by the links. And the way you do this is very simple. You just kind of hold it in this fashion and then you just kind of pull them apart. You hold them straight and you pull them apart. To put them back on, you squeeze the two ends and just kind of do this. So now fit in the collar. You're going to put this on your dog, you're going to wrap this around your dog's neck and you're going to put it on. But here's the trick. It's probably going to be too big. Matter of fact, if, I, if you can do this uh, between the collar and your dog's neck, it's already way too big. What's going to happen is it's going to sit way back on your dog's chest and that's not what you want. Okay, so the best way to fit this, for me anyways, rather than guessing how many links to take out, is I wrap this around the dog and I will kind of do this. So that tells me I could remove two links and still have a comfortable fit. So let's do that. Remove two links, right? And now I'm gonna put this on. And now this is a good fit. What you wanna be able to do is, you want to be able to rotate the collar a little bit. Because with your dog moving around and the leash kind of moving around, this will happen and you will need to readjust from time to time and you will need to do this. So this is a good fit. I can't fit my hand in there really. I can fit a few fingers but that's about it. And I can do that very comfortably without you know, being painful on the dog. Now let's assume you put the collar on a little bit too short, right? Let's say you remove one too many links. Uh, so you put the collar on. Now this, it's kind of tight because I can't really rotate the collar and I can actually feel it on my skin. I can feel it putting pressure on my skin the whole time and you don't want that. Just because it's uncomfortable and your dog will develop pain tolerance and of course that's not what you want anyways. So this is too tight. What you want to do is you want to take it off and add another link, which is why I suggest you get the medium to small links. Because if you get the large, the big links, what's gonna happen is you're gonna remove one link and it's gonna be too tight. You're gonna add another link and it's gonna be too loose because the links are big. So, but if you have something with smaller links, uh, medium or smaller links, then you can, it gives you a better opportunity to add one or two without it getting too tight or too loose. So right here it's perfect, right? Another thing you want to keep in mind is you want the collar to the hardware to look like this, okay? The prong collar has two rings. It has one solid ring, okay, you want that on the inside, and you have one uh, swivel. What you want to do is you want to attach your leash to the to the swivel because again your dog is going to be moving around your leash is going to be moving around so you want this to be comfortable to use for you and your dog 
If you attach it on the solid ring, what's going to happen is your dog's going to move around and the collar is just going to get tight and very uncomfortable. So don't use it on that, use it on the, on the swivel. Okay. Once you have this on the swivel, the way you're going to use this is you're going to do gentle corrections for the most part. So if your dog is kind of pulling a little bit or forging or, you know, doing something inappropriate, what you're going to do is you're going to do this. For most dogs, that's enough. Uh, really, for most dogs, this right here is, is enough. You don't have to make your dog cry or anything like that. So your dog is doing something very inappropriate, your dog's kind of pulling. What you want to do is you want to kind of guide him back towards you. What you don't want to do is you don't want to do this. A lot of people, they put this on their dog, they don't know how to use it. The dog pulls and they do this. So they're trying to pull the dog back. But what happens here is the dog will get used to this pressure and will develop pain tolerance to this and then the dog will not respect this anymore. So don't do this. This, is not, this may stop pulling. It may give you the illusion that it's working great. But what's going to happen is your dog will develop pain tolerance. So you don't want that, right? So what you want is keep it nice and loose. Your dog kind of gets forward. Do this. Automatically, your dog's going to want to stop that. So your dog is going to adjust himself to you. If you want to tell your dog to lay down and he's not laying down, you put the pressure downward. So you would go uh, Fido down and you would do this if your dog doesn't down, right? Same thing with the sit. You would you know, you uh, guide the leash up. Um, and that's pretty much it. When your dog is greeting another dog what, and you find that you, know, you don't want your dog to do that at the time, don't pull your dog like this. Because what happens is when dogs are focused on another dog, even if it's just friendly and uh, they want to greet the other dog, but to you it's not convenient at the time, if you do this, the aggravation will simulate a fight uh, on your dog. So when dogs get, you know, when dogs get corrected over here, it's a, it's a maternal instinct, uh, you know, for a lot of dogs, and it's a natural instinct for dogs to correct each other from here. So they understand that correction, but when they're too focused on another dog, uh, that because it does kind of feel like a bite, that could send the wrong message to your dog. Your dog may think that the other dog is causing this and that will aggravate your dog and it could make your dog, uh, through a lot of repetitions of course, this could make your dog a little bit aggressive uh, towards other dogs if used improperly. So if your dog is greeting another dog and you want to get him away from you, uh, uh, do this. If that's not enough, do one hard one and tell them, all right, let's go, come on, let's go. Because what happens is when dogs are seriously distracted, their pain tolerance goes up, way up. So that's what you want to do. Uh, when the pain tolerance goes up, you, do, you, you have to give a hard one, then you give a hard one. Uh, but that's just about it. That's pretty much the way you want to use the, uh, the pinch collar.